do you considering the story you told us last time about you know one of two minutes of rest and a torn ACL this whole thing? What, I know. What does that say just about Clay's resolve and desired obviously play? One of the great competitors I've ever uh, been around, um, not just from uh, a willingness to to compete and fight, but uh, a level of play that that he reached um, during this postseason. Um, when you combine all that, just his uh, his confidence, uh, his competitive fight, uh, his ability to keep cool under pressure. Uh, Guys, guys, amazing. How have you processed the last four, fourteen or so hours? You know? How are you feeling at this? Point? Uh, still, sort of processing it. Um, more than anything, just I keep thinking about Kevin and Clay, and and you know, the the severity of the injuries. You know, injuries are always a part of the playoffs, and whoever wins um, generally. Um, you know, has has a lot of good fortune along the way. We've been um, in that position, and um, oftentimes, um, you know, injuries play a role when you lose. Um, but very rarely, if ever, um, in the finals, um, can I uh, has has there ever been you know a, an Achilles tear um, f from a star player in the final? I don't remember anything like this. I remember. You know, Kareem spraining his ankle, or you know, Magic Johnson and Byron Scott pulling hamstrings. I remember stuff like that. But for Kevin to rupture his Achilles and then Clay to tear his ACL in back-to-back -back finals games, it's how do you process that ever? On top of that, I mean, how do you process looking forward and knowing that they're going to be out for a significant time next season? Yeah, yeah. So um, it's hard to even uh, picture. You know what next year's team will look like at this point, and um, we'll, we'll see how it all shakes out. Um, and we're, you know, we're hoping to have both those guys back. Um, and if that's the case, uh, it'd be great. But neither one would be available uh, for quite a while to play. So our, our team's going to look a lot different next year. Steve, we're back on maybe day one here. You said we've got to cherish this. We all know. This doesn't last forever. And right. Let's let's have joy. Um, I'm sure you're feeling some of that even right now because you, you just don't know. Yeah, um, you don't know. You don't know. Yeah, some of what I'm feeling is uh, a sense of pride in uh, our group. I can't tell you how many texts I've had um, over the last 24 hours from uh, coaches and colleagues around the league saying. You know, this was more impressive than your championship years. You know, that you know what what these guys uh, have accomplished in this playoff run with all these injuries through all this adversity is even more impressive than than their winning titles over the last you know, four years. So um, that's how I feel. Uh, just an incredible accomplishment. Came up just short of, of being able to force a game seven. Um, but uh, the, the, what hangs over everything is the injuries to Kevin and Clay and what that means for them uh, individually in their careers. And, and uh, so it's a, it's, a, it's a strange day. Steve, what do you make of the term organizational fatigue? I think mean, that's been going around a little bit, just everything that you guys have been through the last five years. Do you, do you feel any of that? Do you think that's happened here? Organizational fatigue? Yeah, just top to bottom. Um, I, I haven't heard that phrase before. Um, I, I think fatigue in general, however you want to phrase it, um, but um, it's, it's not easy going through these seasons, um, getting all the way to the finals. Um, it uh, takes so much uh, energy and emotion and uh, to do it back to back to back to back to back. Did I get that right? Mm -hmm. Were those five? Yeah. Maybe I, yeah. Um, that's just an incredible accomplishment. But yeah, it takes an awful lot out of you. So I think everybody's fried right now. Um, but that's what the summer's for. And we'll recharge the batteries and uh, be ready to go in uh, late September. With all the questions hanging over the team, is there any 
part of you that wonders if this could be the end of the dynasty? No, no. I don't look look at it or think about it in those terms. I really don't. Um, you know, Steph's, Steph's going to be back next year and Draymond's going to be back and, um, you know, I, we're going to have a bunch of bunch of the players from here and we can still be really good and, you know, uh, assuming um, we get, you know, some, some breaks health-wise, uh, you know, Clay, KD, that, you know, they recover, we could be really good again. So I, I don't look at it from that standpoint at all. Steve, on that, I mean, Bob was mentioning the Spurs, like they weren't always a favorite, but they had obviously that long run of sustained success and always a chance. How do you see that flying to these this world? I think uh, the, the similarity is the, uh, uh, the internal um, culture, the internal stability. Having been in San Antonio for all those years, I felt it um, through you know, Tim Duncan, uh, David Robinson, the, the, the core guys who were there who provided that foundation. And our team is the same way um, with uh, the strength of, of the group, the character of the group. You know, guys like Steph and Clay and Draymond and Andre, Kevin, all these guys just because of who they are and because of their commitment to one another, um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to survive uh, whatever adversity comes our way. Just like it did throughout this whole season with everything that happened. Here we were with um, you know, a chance to force a game seven in the finals uh, without uh, you know, some key guys. So we're, we were right there. So we will uh, continue to, uh, to survive and, and thrive. You talked during the season about how DeMarcus is probably just going to trampoline this mm -hmm. season into a bigger contract also with the torn quad in the playoffs. It's, it's probably more uh, unknown. What he's talking yeah. crazy. Can you, are you more optimistic that maybe he can come back? I think there's a chance. I, I would say that uh, you know the, the the hope is that um, frankly that he can do a lot better financially um, than what we could offer him. Um, but who knows? You know, every year is different. Um, there are a lot more teams with cap room this summer than uh, than last summer and. Uh, this this summer is going to be um, it'll be a wild free agent market, and um, we have to figure out you know our own situation, uh, particularly with Clay and Kevin, and uh, how all that shakes out. But um, I could I could absolutely foresee um, a place for Demarcus here if if um, if he wanted to come back. It's just a question of. You know what? What are his goals? What's out there for him? Would you Steven, this is it for Sean Livingston. Can you speak to you know going back to a devastating injury for this guy who came back and became his player and did some really special things for you guys? So. Yeah, Sean um, has always been uh, kind of one of our quiet leaders, and I think this year he took on a more vocal role. Uh, particularly with David and, and Zaza moving on last year, David West. Uh, Sean and Andre became the elder statesmen on the team, and uh, they both took on bigger roles uh, vocally. And uh, I thought Sean was really key for us this year in holding everything together. He's always been sort of under the radar, one of our key human beings. Uh, obviously an excellent player, but uh, Rock solid human being and, and uh, somebody who understands team dynamics. And, um, so, you know, I would love to continue to coach him, and we'll see how it all plays out. But uh, Sean is uh, Sean is a, a special, special human being, and you know, we've been lucky to have him. It's a really uh, complicated free agency period that you're mm -hmm. going into. How how much does it settle you to know that? Bob Myers is basically the guy spearheading all of Uh Yes, I'm, I have unbelievable confidence in Bob, and uh, he's he's in, incredible at his job, one of the best in the business. And I think on the outside looking in, everybody looks at a GM and says, well, how is this guy as a GM? Here's who he picked. Um, the term is general manager. It's not general picker. 
<laughs> you know, it's general manager. Bob manages uh, people. He manages our, our coaching staff. He manages the players. So what he means to the group goes way beyond who he picked with the 39th pick in 2013. And yet, you know, most of what's covered um, media-wise is, you know, every basketball move. Um, Jerry West, probably the best GM of all time, once said, uh, if you bat 500 as a GM, you're doing great. Um, one out of every two getting right, that's a, that's a hell of a record. So uh, nobody's going get, to get, get them all right. In fact, most people are going get, to get them wrong more often than not. Uh, but the stability that Bob provides, the uh, humanity, uh, the friendship, the guidance, the counsel, um, that doesn't grow on trees. Yeah, there, that doesn't show up in an analytics book. That doesn't show up in um, anything other than an exceptionally gifted, uh, compassionate, smart human being. So Bob's value uh, is uh, of the utmost importance to our about, organization. You talked about uh, <clears throat> the injuries and a lot of the different things that have gone on this season. How has the season just been different for you as a coach in, in past seasons? What is the biggest thing that's stuck? I, I mean, every season is different. It really is, uh, depending on circumstances, injuries, um, you know, your place in the in the league, what your what your team is trying to accomplish. Uh, to me, I, I wouldn't even. Um, look at it in terms of this year being different. Um, I just look at it as uh, an extension of our five-year run. Um, and then there are new dynamics at play year after year. And so this year was more about managing the fatigue, managing the, uh, the, the length of the journey and trying to help this team get to the finish line. Uh, because it takes forever to get there. You know, it's a nine month haul when you, from the start of camp. So many things happen. And uh, so I'm really proud of uh, the, the job that our coaching staff did, that our, our team did, in just keeping things together and continuling to push forward. So it seems like we wanted to take a daily pulse on Katie's free agency throughout the year. Mm -hmm. Now that it is very close, and, you know, the entire season has played itself out, what's kind of your pulse, your optimism? Uh, well, the injury um, kind of throws everything uh, for a loop. Um, so I, I have no idea what Kevin's going to do. Um, I know that we all want him back. And um, we think this is a great situation for him and, um, you know, vice versa. Uh, so hopefully we get him back and keep this thing going with the understanding that he's a free agent and we want what's best for him and he's free to make any choice he wants. So hopefully he's back um, and we will, uh, you know, we will all give him any advice, any counsel that he needs and ultimately he's going to make his own decision. He's earned that. You have so many talented young coaches. Have you decided on summer league stuff? I know we're only, I know it only ended last night. Yeah, Aaron Miles is going to coach our uh, summer league team, and then he'll um, build his staff from from within. So, yeah, I'm excited for Aaron. He's done a great job in Santa Cruz and, and uh, very helpful uh, during the playoffs. And uh, he's a talented young coach, so um, be a good opportunity for him. Coach, I don't think anybody has ever taken your success for granted, and yet there are a lot of people who are surprised by what happened this year. How do you manage those expectations with the realities, especially after a year like this? Um, you don't really worry too much about what everybody else is saying. Um, you just come in here every day and you get the work in that's necessary. And um, and you manage those, uh, uh, those bumps in the road. You manage the people involved and you keep pushing forward with the big picture in mind. Um, Coaching in the NBA is a lot about pacing your team, especially with a veteran team. Um, you know, being being in the finals five straight years, um, 
our practices this year were dramatically different than they were, you know, four or five years ago. You have to adjust and adapt. So, um, but part of dealing with this uh, this this job and this uh, NBA season is uh, all the noise and the the uh, judgment and the criticism, and we all have it um, at the fingertips with our phones and all that stuff. And uh, the players feel that. And there's a there's a heavy burden on their shoulders socially from from fans and critics alike so you have to try to help the players navigate all of that you know five years ago you were in that very same spot and I asked you the question at the time was what are you going to tell the team about playing in a tournament like this what to expect and your answer was there would be really difficult times things they had never expected never anticipated they would never have to learn how to deal with it was a very well measured answer at the time did what you encountered this year your worst fears? Oh, yeah, yeah, by far. Um, and if you had asked me f four days ago, five days ago, I, I would have said, no, not not really. Um, because everything that happened up until five days ago was just, you know, basketball and, and people and, um, you know, bumps in the road. But you're talking about two, you know, career altering injuries to two of your best players in back-to-back -back finals games. Um, unheard of. Uh, it'll probably never happen again. And so uh, we're in, in new territory now. And um, you, you just have to keep keep moving forward. Can you say what you'll take from this? Is it too to tell? Um, I, I think um, perspective, you know, uh, understanding, um, how fleeting this all can be, um, basketball, life in general. Um, you know, we're, we, we talk often about how lucky we are to play basketball for a living, to coach basketball for a living, come in here and to get paid to do this, um, something that we've enjoyed all our lives, but um, it can be taken away quickly. And, um, you know, this week has been proof of that. One more question. How do you feel about your future here? I mean, obviously you signed it. My future? Yeah. How refreshed do you feel like you'll be after this? Uh, I'm excited about, um, well, I'm excited about the summer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you guys all are. Um, but I'm, I, I have no doubt I'll be refreshed and recharged and ready to go. I love this job. I love doing what I do. I love the working working with the people that uh, that I work with every day. So um, I'll be ready to go. But yeah, I need a little vacation. And you guys do too. So yes. Thank thanks you. for everybody. Uh, enjoyed working with all of you this year. Thank you. Thank you.